Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we are going to talk about one of the generic problem when we work with the SharePoint list as a data source into Power Canvas app. When we try to search the list which is having number of records more than 2000, 5000, 10,000 then probably like the search does not work in an expected way. It just only search for the 500 or 2000 records based on the setting which is provided into your Power Canvas app. So if I scroll down to the settings, so right now I could see like the data row limit is 500. So what is the workaround for that uh, uh, to search into the more than 5,000 records, 10,000 records into SharePoint list. So there we are going to uh, talk about in this video. So right now I have just created my simple app. I can minimize that and maximize the window size. So over here I have this header, just a normal text box search text box and one glass icon which can be leveraged to uh, search the uh, data inside my SharePoint list. So first of all, let me uh, tell you that I have added my this financial details SharePoint list which is having uh, 700 plus records and I wish to search the data across this uh, financial data list. And I have added that as a data source. You can add that while using this add data and search for SharePoint list and that connection can be established for you so I can just crawl down there is a SharePoint and once you click on that you will be given with a SharePoint site and the list so I have already established that connection so I'm just skipping it so now on select of my this glass icon I wish to search my SharePoint data source so I, if I say search financial data and the text so text is my text input field one dot text comma and the column so column is title and the other column would be field one so as i have imported this list from one of the excel so that's why these columns are actually appearing as field one field two in a generic common way so we can simply use this field one so now you can see like we have this yellow warning signal that is a delegation warning that uh, the search part of this formula might not work correctly in large data sets. So that is where like we are going to handle, we are going to come up with a workaround how you can actually search in the large data set. So rather than using search, what I'll do, I'll just simply remove it and have this intermediate flow, which would be actually taking my input box as an parameter and uh, in, then just call my SharePoint action as get items and based on uh, the criteria where I wish to select across the columns, it will respond me the result into JSON. And that JSON we are going to interpret in two ways. Like uh, I will be splitting this video in two parts, like where I would be just uh, interpreting that JSON in a traditional way of extracting the actual uh, data or the string out of my this entire JSON and show that into data table. And the other way is a new experimental feature, which is there, parse JSON. If I go to the side, this app setting and if I just go to the upcoming feature and say parse JSON so in the experimental you will find parse JSON function is a newly feature which is added which can be used to interpret the JSON directly so that because it's experimental I would not still recommend to use this for the production live application you can simply use the traditional way of parsing it and which I'm going to show you today and in other video I will be talking about this experimental feature of parse JSON so let's skip this for now I'm just closing it and now like uh, this one of the flow which I've already uh, inserted to do the same operation so let's let me remove this and start from scratch so I'm creating a new flow and I'll start from a blank and in the trigger I'll just remove the default trigger and use the power app v2 trigger I'll just type in power app and choose the power apps version 2 trigger and which will allow me to actually specify the type of input so it's an input i'll just read out that string and string will be passed from my power app as a search box and in the next step i'll be simply using get items to get the uh, list items out of my sharepoint list and i'll be just connecting establish this connection with my site address and list name is financial Details. so let me just start typing it and over here so based on filter query this so we can define our own data filter query 
So as I said, like they should search into multiple columns. So I would be actually doing a search into title, country and product. These three columns, you can have multiple as well. I'll just do that. So I'll say substring of and then my input and input I will be reading from this power apps. And then the next parameter is the title, the column name. So this is for first field and then I'll just do a or and is this my input and this time I'll change that to a second field. So second field is field one for my country and I replace it and in the later part I'll just again paste it or type the substring of again input and the title would be I mean the column would be the second field as product so the name internal name is field 2 so I'll just paste that as field 2 and input is being set as input from the power app so this is how I can extract the data which is matching this filter query and as I said like you can do very well do that for a larger set of operations so for that you have to go to these three clicks and to the, this item setting you have to enable the pagination and you can specify the threshold limit, limit for that pagination and it will actually like uh, result or uh, throw back the result into the paging form and the threshold would be 5000 uh, 5, so you can very well set that limit to even more than that then 100k records and I can say done so now I can easily handle 100k records uh, using this search operation or get item operation so now as I got this uh, output from this, I have to like uh, actually interpret what columns I would need to require so that I can just return the JSON of that selected column. So I will use a select data operation and use this value of items from dynamic content and now I will start creating my JSON. So over here I just need to specify my title which I would like to have that attribute into JSON. country and with country I'll just map country and product and I'll map that as product from dynamic content and let's say unit sold and again I'll find that from dynamic content as unit sold alright so now I got my this JSON and if I save it and run it you would be seeing this as a getting the JSON uh, in the JSON as a comma separated JSON like with the normal protocol uh, used for JSON but as in, in a traditional way as I said like I would wish to extract the rows out of my JSON so I have to do one additional operation that is join and in data operation there is a action as join operation and I would be appending one delimiter so that I can split my rows like whatever rows I am getting from the previous tab you know uh, delimited fashion so I can use semicolon or pipe like for separation you can very well do that like uh, based on what you need is so I'm just doing that as with pipe and I'm just giving it a name as a final action I would be responding the output back to my power app so I'll choose the power app action and respond to a power app or flow and over here I'll just say simply text and the output variable I would be defining as output so, so that this attribute can be accessed into my power apps and the entire value to respond would be my output of join operation so now I can rename it and let's say like uh, search financial flow and saving it so now on click of my this glass icon I would wish to run this uh, search financial flow I'll just start typing run and input parameter is text input one dot text and if I say dot it will give me the output and the output which we are throwing back from our auto our automate and now I can just select it now I need to actually capture this into a variable so that that variable can be interpreted later on to parse our JSON so I'll just simply say set flow output comma to this but right now it just capture the output which we got with a uh, delimiter as a pipe 
but I need to split so that I have this flow output variable in terms of object like rather than a string so I just need to do a split operation onto my output and that split operation would be actually delimited with pipe as I said that I have used the delimiter pipe and just closing the brackets and split run text output just fixing the bracket so now we have this so now we have captured the object into flow output as a next step I would be iterating through, through this flow output because we got this as a splitted array so for that I will be using a for all function and for all function I'll be passing this variable flow output and then uh, iterating through the records for all flow output and then I'll use collect function and just give it a name financial collection and then I'll set, start setting up the records with the parenthesis closing it and over here I'll specify the column which I wish to pick and as a starting I would just wish to show you like what actually I got into this record so this record dot value I'll just bind that with one of the one column only initially and then later on I'll just tell you how we can extract the content out of it I missing one bracket so I've just closed it now we are good with this formula and let me just save it and run once so that I can show you what output we are getting and to uh, show that output I'll be just adding one data table into my this uh, blank area so that we can see what we are actually fetching out so I'll just say data table and I'll bind that with the financial collection and I'll just drag that down and I'll just bind this with one column the country column which we are getting so right now I just created only one column and again so now let's run it I'm just clicking run and over here I'll just uh, pick one of the let's say country name France let's do a search on France and click search now we are expecting our power automate to run and it has started giving me results now you can see I have this uh, all the search data which is having this France as keyword and it's giving me the entire JSON set and from this JSON now I would start interpreting my actual values so from country I need to extract this France product this character and unit sold so let's let's do that now the actual processing work so I again go back to my search icon and expand my formula so now I'll just have my other columns in place so we'll start with I'll just say product and the unit sold I'll just say that as record value so this will actually bind it my records so now I have these three columns and my this data table is giving me error so I'll just remove the data table because now I wish to add these three columns to my data table so let's just remove this one for time being and add a new data table so that I can have three columns to show I'm just re-adding that just binding my collection and then bind my these three columns so I'll just say add field and now I'll choose these three field add so I have done the binding but I have not yet done the splitting of my data so to split the data I have to start uh, writing up the split uh, and the extract first and formula the functions so for that I will just refer to my notepad and will show you that let me copy this one of the value and paste it over here so now you can see like I am starting splitting up this record value by, by comma and then extracting the first item because my country is first item and first and of first so that gives me the first item which is splitted from this uh, record value and then again I would be splitting by colon so that I can find out the second value 
which is their actual data, the country name, and then showing that as a value. So again, this same formula I am going to do for my this second one, and this time I would be splitting that by two, and the again the last piece I'll split that by three and get this number three out of it. So now I'm saving it and we'll run. We'll run to see our output. And I'm just again starting search on France. And now you could see I got the data as country, product, and in unit sold, I have this curly braces appended. So you can very well remove that with the substitute function. Again, like substitute and put this parenthesis with just empty bracket, something like that. So that can be easily handled. So I'll just uh, go back to my formula and we'll again go to my this and we'll use substitute and substitute this value with my text. Text is my this curly braces with blank. So this is the formula I have done and I'll just save it and run it. Now I would expect just my this parenthesis would just go away from data and do a fresh run to get the data out of SharePoint list. So now we have the data France. You can very well remove this double quotes as well with the substitute function and have all this data working. So now if I just select for PSEO into the column two, and it would be giving me the search results matching to my this input keyword and right now it's not clearing my this collection because i forget one thing which is very important just clear out my collection before doing a again one call so i'll just say clear financial collection financial call and I'll just save and rerun. So this time it will refresh my collection and mine it again. So this time I'm searching with Vizio and now I'm expecting my collection to be cleared out every time I'm hitting. So right now you can see I got the result from Vizio product. And if I again search for France and do a search, now the collection would be refreshed. Now I got the result related to France. So that's how you can create, you can have your Power Automate as a middle tier to return the search data without any delegation uh, thinking or without any problems. So in my next video, I'll just uh, use the same Power Automate or app, but this time I would use the parse JSON function or feature to extract or to get the data into my this data table. So we'll see that. And just wait for that video. If meanwhile you have any question, then please feel to drop your comment and I'll try to answer at my earliest. And that's it for today. Thank you.